Hello, my name is Jeremy and I'm an Elephant Keeper at ZSL. I'm going to be talking to you a bit about the Secretary of State Standards for Modern Zoo Practice, Appendix 8.8, .8, which is a government document that outlines how we look after elephants in UK zoos. More specifically, I'm going to be talking about how that affects our provision of enrichment and training and the processes involved in that. This is an illustration to show the size of the Secretary of State Standards and Modern Zoo Practice document, which from now on I'll refer to as the Triple SZMP. And we have to abide by this in all UK elephant facilities. Being a government document, this is law, and as such, we have a legal obligation to make sure that what we're doing is in line with the rules set out in the Triple SZMP. This document is too large for me to go into detail on, but it is public access, so feel free to browse it at your leisure. Among other things, I'm going to be focusing on the record keeping aspect of this document. We have to keep records on all aspects of training and enrichment and for that matter elephant husbandry as a whole. These records have to be printed out and made available during our zoo inspection. The impact of the Triple SZMP means that the amount of paperwork our elephant department produces for our zoo inspection is actually as big as, if not larger, than the paperwork for the rest of the zoo combined. I'm going to speak to you a bit today about how we train our animals and provide enrichment in line with this document. This slide includes an example of one of our training plans. These plans are written up before we start training a behaviour and outlines the goals of the training and the steps involved in achieving that goal. This is just a rough guide and obviously in any training session we must remain flexible to the needs of the animal and move forward according to them. However, this gives us a rough plan to follow. On the right you can see a short video showing the finished behaviour of a trunk wash with our previous bull Emmett. A trunk wash is a way of getting a voluntary mucus sample from an elephant to test for tuberculosis. Ready? At the end of each training session, a record is filled out which outlines what happened in the session, who was involved and also a session rating. This is recorded as a hard copy and then uploaded onto Zims with all of our other records. This is an example of our Keeper Competency Assessment document. Before any new keeper starts training elephants, they must complete three phases. The first being theory workshops and assessment of knowledge by the Animal Behaviour Management Officer. The second being assessment of practical husbandry behaviours by a senior keeper. And the third is planning and implementing a new behaviour assessed by the Animal Behaviour Management Officer. Once these three stages are complete, the keeper is then competent enough to begin training elephants on section. On the right, you can see our deputy head of section assessing one of our new elephant keepers doing phase two. Let them be elephants. While we obviously have to be able to carry out lots of um, behaviours for medical reasons with our elephants, we also want to try and minimise the time we spend with them as much as possible. We want to allow them the time and the space to simply be elephants and exhibit natural behaviours that are not dictated to by their keepers. Instead of managing every aspect of their care, we want to give them as many opportunities as we can to look after themselves without the intervention of their keepers. We only want to interact with these elephants when it's convenient for them instead of us dictating to them because it is convenient for us. Our vision is larger than our current facility can manage, so looking to the future we are hoping to be able to develop our elephant enclosure to match our vision. This will tie in with our long term management plan. Legally every zoo which houses elephants must have a long term management plan to cover the next 30 years. This must include an exit strategy in case the facility decides to no longer keep elephants in the future. I've included a copy of ZSL's enrichment guidelines which essentially outlines how all enrichment pro provided should be goal based should be assessed before use to make sure it's safe. It should also be reviewed to ensure it's meeting the goals initially set out and to make sure that it's actually being used and not being a waste of time or something that doesn't work. On the right, you can see a short video showing one of the ways we present browse to the elephants. The use of a log pile has the goal of increasing the amount of time it takes for the elephants to eat the browse and also helps create a natural foraging behavior.
To meet all of these criteria given to us, we have created an area specifically devoted to enrichment. In here we can store materials, store finished enrichment devices, we have a workshop for building new enrichment and also an area to record what has been provided for elephants this week. The idea when creating this area is very similar to how we use or we all use antecedent arrangement prior to a training session. However, instead of helping our animals succeed in a training session, this is all about making it as easy as possible for our keepers to succeed in their provision of enrichment. We have a folder full of fact sheets on all of our enrichment devices we have previously used. This makes sure that knowledge and ideas are not lost with keeper turnover and provides inspiration to keepers who are motivated but lacking ideas. This includes any safety concerns to consider, the goals of the enrichment and a list of materials needed to build it. Once we have decided what we're going to build, we'll build it in our enrichment workshop. We have everything we could need in terms of tools and materials here to help us be as creative as we can be for our animals. Once something has been built, it will then be given to our elephants. Here you can see Luca enjoying a simple fire hose cube, trying to get those tasty pellets inside. The goal of enrichment like this is to occupy time, usually overnight. Behind her, Gita is enjoying a paper bag she's found after our keepers have buried it in the sand. This would then be recorded on our enrichment board. At the end of each week, a photo is taken of this board and stored digitally so that we can go back and see exactly what enrichment we've provided on what days. This board works by using small photos of all our enrichment devices with magnets attached to the back of them so that we can swap them in and out as we need to. This is an example of one of our enrichment evaluation forms. We've created these forms to review the enrichment we provide our elephants and make sure it is A, being used and B, meeting the goals initially set out. In here we describe the enrichment, describe what we expect to see, outline our goals, note how much time each elephant spent using the enrichment, and then provide a rating for how the advice was received by the elephants. At the end we write a small conclusion and note what we would, we would do differently next time to improve. This review can be done in situ when our, the enrichment is prevented to the elephants, but usually we review it the next day using our CCTV system. On here we can see how the enrichment fared overnight and see how successful we were. This part gives us the evidence that helps us push forward our evidence-based approach to elephant enrichment. To end this presentation, I've included a video of Sam, a young bull who was recently moved on to another facility, enjoying some enrichment our keepers provided while he was still here at Whipsnade. I hope you've enjoyed that. Thank you for watching.